So welcome today. This is a video about a regenerative endodontic procedure. Um, today though, I want to be very, very clear about the remit of this video today. So this video is not gonna talk about alternatives. It's not gonna talk about the risks and the benefits of uh, doing a, a rep procedure. This video is basically a demonstration on how to do a rep procedure. So I just wanna be super, super clear about that. What I will do though, is I'll talk about the, the case that we are um, going to undertake today. You know, we're going to talk about the the, 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 the person behind the tooth and and, and, and what, why I have decided to do a rep in this case. So in the case with this um, patient, I am going to use the European Society of Endodontics or Endodontology um, protocol. It's, it's, a, it's a really, really good free document that you can um, access online. And this protocol gives their, um, their recommended way of how to carry out a rep. The great thing about this is it also talks about um, if the case is appropriate for the for the for the, for the given treatment, it, it really gives a, a consent form to give to the parents as well, which I think is fantastic, and um, it's 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 a great sort of aid memoir on how to carry out a rep. The problem is, it was carried out in 2016, so you know we um, were looking at maybe seven or eight years since you know, um, this protocol was looked at. And I'd say that was probably the only um, sort of downside to this. Um, what, I, what I would say is I have looked at the evidence ad nauseum for, for, for 12 full months. And I would say the, um, the, the protocol is, is pretty good. It's pretty good. So I'm, I'm happy to follow this. So now we've got that out of the way, let's talk about the, 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 the case at hand here today. So this young man, what a, what a guy, amazing. He was, um, you know, he, he really understood what needed to be done. You know, mum um, was, 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 was engaged in the consenting process. And essentially he's 12 at the moment. Um, when he was about eight or nine years old, he fell over in school and knocked his tooth. Um, you know, we gave him all the options and um, we, we, we spoke at length about all the options. And actually they wanted to go for the rep procedure. So the procedure itself is divided into two parts, okay. And what's really, really, really important is um, is it's, it's all about disinfection okay so the first part is about access and yeah you are doing a little bit of cleaning and things um, but uh, it's what it's what in between the two appointments that's important so uh, the first appointment essentially is to clean the uh, is to access the tooth and, and and obviously use like an irrigating um, solution like sodium hypochlorite but um, we use an intracanal medicament in between the two appointments at this point, I'm doing a very, very kind of um, uh, sort of rough working length assessment. Of course, any tooth that um, has got a wide open apex, this this working length is is going to be is going to be a bit bit of a wild reading. But it's it's really really important to make sure that you've got kind of a, a sort of a guesstimation, um, so you know where you can put your uh, irrigating uh, tip syringe tip. Or needle tip. So the uh, first irrigating solution we're going to use is sodium hypochlorite. Now um, I have spoke to quite a few people about carrying out this procedure and the ESE guidelines does suggest to use sodium hypochlorite but I have spoken to someone called Sarah Garshaw, or, sorry Laura Garshaw and she has suggested not to use this. Now I didn't uh, ask her to elaborate this but I'm assuming it's because the sodium hypochlorite is um, you know could be probably um, uh, be problematic in a, in a wide open apex. Once you've dried with paper points, you're gonna irrigate with sterile saline, okay? And what this does is it kind of just counteracts the effects of the um, sodium hypochlorite. And then once you have um, uh, cleaned out, you're gonna now use 70% uh, EDTA. If you didn't don't know what EDTA is, it's kind of like a chelating material. It kind of like removes a hard tooth um, uh, tissue. And it's thought that it, by doing this, you release 
growth factors and molecules that are going to um, encourage the stem cells to, to work in the regenerative procedure. So uh, my dissertation subject was on the use of intracanal medicaments um, be be between the two appointments and um, the two medicaments that are uh, used is either um, calcium hydroxide or a triple antibiotic paste. Now, as if anyone's done any research at all, what you'll realise is that there's no real right or wrong answer to use one or the other. And I think in this case, the reason why I used calcium hydroxide, it was for a few reasons. One, um, I've used triple antibiotic paste in, in the past. It's kind of like a sort of leather mixy kind of um, consistency. And it can be really, really, really tough to remove from the, um, the canal walls. It's also suggested that it can be a little bit tough on the stem cells. Um, and also, main point is the calcium hydroxide is easier to get hold of. And um, what I'm using here is just a, a sort of resin modified GIC as a temporary filling material. So, second appointment. Okay. At this appointment, what's really, really, really important is that um, you know you, you need to see that signs of inflammation have ceased. Okay, and actually in the ESE guidance, you can see um, there's like a kind of a checklist to tell you um, if the uh, the tooth has um, you know uh, sort of got better over that two or three week period. In this case you'll notice um, with the patient is that the draining sinus or the uh, the abscess has resolved so if we do a kind of like a little bit of a comparison here you can see that the the, the one prior you can see that the the, the sinus and, and 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 now it's healed so to me we know that the tri the um, calcium hydroxide has worked okay so same again you need to use isolation And we're going to access the tooth. So, what's a really, really important um, step is the irrigation with the uh, EDTA. Um, if if people are unsure about what EDTA is, essentially it is a chelating material that sort of can can uh, release growth factors within the tooth itself. The second step is to irrigate with sterile, sterile saline and essentially what this does is it reduces the adverse effects of the irrigants on the target cells or the stem cells that we're going um, we're gonna kind of hope to encourage to grow the root and also the soft tissues. So this is the, the you, this is the, diff, the the point now where it's it's more difficult than you'd think. Okay, so we have to induce bleeding into the canal space, and um, you know whoever's done many many root canals before, you, you can you can think to yourself that this is quite easy, but actually, in um, in practice, it it can be quite tough, and also you can induce bleeding, but you can't make the blood go to the the level that you'd like to. Um, in this case, in the ESE guidance, it suggests that you use a H file uh, uh, sort of bent at the end, and then you kind of like twist it at the apex. Here, I've got this um, uh, sort of GP removal tool. It's got like a little hook on the end that I can induce bleeding, and you've got to wait 15 minutes. And you can see here, I've waited 15 minutes, and you've wait for a blood clot, and you can kind of see that kind of. Um, sort of glossy appearance if you take a tooth out and you have a look at the um the the extraction site you can you know when the uh, the clot has formed because it's got like that like i say glossy appearance what you've got to do now is you have to fill the tooth okay and the best way to fill the also sort of cap the tooth off is to use a bioceramic so in this case i'm using bidentine now 
if you were to place biodentine directly onto the blood clot, it would be a complete and utter disaster and mess, okay? I mean, at the moment now, it looks like a complete mess because um, there's blood everywhere. Um, and but but if if you were to if you were to um, if you were to put it straight on, it just it just be too much, and there'd be be lots of um, biodentine everywhere. One of the tricks that the ESC suggests is that you use like a uh, like a collagen sponge as like a, a kind of a of a matrix to for the for the biodentine to sit onto. And in fact, I've used this um, with apexification uh, cases where I've pushed the collagen matrix all the way to the apex, and then. Um, place the MTA plug at the end. It also suggests in the guidance that you make sure that the um, the collagen matrix is is soaked with blood um, because voids in the uh, in the canal space aren't a great thing. So annoyingly, annoyingly, um, when I was placing the biodenting, my camera. Um, stopped working so in a second what you'll see is the camera um, shoots from no biodentine to a quite a bit of biodentine so it's it's a weird um, sort of uh, thing in the United Kingdom and that's where I practice is that um, the camera that I have on my uh, microscope is classed as a camera and not a video recorder so essentially it turns off every 30 minutes um, because I believe if it's if it's used for more than thirty minutes, it's classed as a video camera. And then there's there's like tax issues there. So um, just a little bit of tax chat there um, during this 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 video. Um, I really 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 like biodentine as well. It's 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 a lovely sort of material. If you if you it it's it, it's it's really really strange to get used to. And, and I suppose if I could give you any advice is once it's placed, just just leave it alone. Don't muck around with it because you um you'll make it uh, you'll make it worse. So with biodentine, you just drop it on and it kind of just like sort of spreads out all nicely. Um, so you wait 15 minutes for the bidentine to um, to set, and then it's 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 solid there. So what you can do is you can clean the access, get rid of all the blood. So obviously that might cause the staining. And then I am using a, a resin mod a like your resin modified glass ionomer um, over the um, uh, the bidentine plug, and this kind of seals it up a little bit nicely. And then on top of that, I'm going to use a composite. So um, if you look at the x-ray here, I suppose if I'm being hyper, hyper, hyper critical with myself is that maybe I, I would have liked the um, the plug and also the biodentine to be a little bit uh, um, more below the CEJ. Um, but actually, I feel like that it is at the level of the CEJ. They say two, two, uh, two millimeters, but I'm, I'm being cruel to myself there. So... As you can see here, overall, you know, it's 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 a really nice result. Um, the uh, the the reviews are going to be between uh, I think it's twelve six um, sorry six uh, three six twelve and then after that every uh, five years um, radiographic and in the ESE guidance it gives you kind of like a little tech checklist of what is and isn't considered success. And um, like I say, the, the protocol is amazing. It, it kind of covers all bases. I would wish it to um, have been, um, I would have wished it to uh, be updated because 2016 is a long time. Um, but like I said, in, in, in the past, um, when I did my masters um, two years ago now, I, uh, noticed that the uh, the evidence was, was pretty good listen if you really really enjoyed this video I I, I enjoy making them um, please like and subscribe and if you have any um, questions about this case or any other cases let's have a little conversation in the comments section below um, thanks for watching and I will see you soon okay ta -ra.